Hello YouTube, this will be trailer update, I believe part two. If I'm wrong, the title will give you the correct number. So I received some more parts in the mail. And first I will show you the main frame, or as they call the spring holders. And I got kind of a pleasant surprise here too. The, uh, this is the piece I was needing done. This is the piece they made for me. Very pleased with it. Same thickness, galvanized and everything like that. But I got one, two, three of them. I only ordered and paid for two, but they sent another one. I'm guessing probably it was because of the material length that they already did the setup for the break anyway and made the piece and just kept cutting and had another piece long enough. So, yeah, they made me an extra third piece and threw it in the box. So, uh, I think with that, that made it way better than I expected. So I'm very happy. Called uh, It's called StainlessSupply.com. So if you get a chance to ever use them, not cheap by any means. I mean, you're asking for something custom-made, so it's not cheap, but not unreasonable for what you're getting, at least in my opinion. So, yep, that's what I got. So I've got one, mis one piece in case I make a mistake with one piece, or what I can do, too, if I don't need the extra piece for that. I may decide to actually cut it in half and use it for part of the uh, caster carriage I I think my dad, when he put the trailer together, if it came with uh, casters, because this is one of those folding trailers that you can actually fold it in half, fold the tongue down, and you can actually put it on little wheel casters and store it in your garage in a small space that's not any bigger than just this part of the frame itself. So I may end up doing that. But anyway, what I did too is I brought in the back part of the frame. As you can see, there's the tail lights, And you're seeing everything for the bottom. This is actually the bottom part of the deck frame that you're seeing. I'm keeping everything that way because before I disassemble it, I'm going to label it all. I'm going to have letters on all the parts so that I know exactly, and then I'm going to have diagrams and probably even take a picture just to be sure so that I can reassemble it real easy. But the thing that I need when I get to the meetup, and you will probably see some of this too, is I'm going to need a support piece in here. This is the very back piece of the trailer that has been putting all that pressure using, you know, like I said, like a giant lever all the way up to about this part of the trailer and then coming up to this front piece here and causing it to bend because it created so much stress so if I put a support piece in here and then from now on when I'm loading anything with the ramp I'm gonna have a jack stand underneath this so that it does not flex down it would be flexing down towards the camera and putting that pressure as long as I have something I mean I could use this part right here but since it's in from the trailer to make it simple I always like to have a little bit extra so piece of C channel piece of O channel something like that not real long maybe from about here maybe down to about there in the center section just so that it has a more of a flat area for a jack stand to sit and then that way there won't be enough stress and as you can see this part here all it needs is a little bit of cleanup and painting there is no no twisting no stress bending anything like that so this needs very little or anything and like I said just that one piece and then here where it's bent we're gonna straighten that out and then put some kind of support pieces in there too uh, maybe Put a bead of weld on there or something like that and weld them into place um, i could probably get away with bolted into place but since i think they've got a welder ready to go it would be better even just an l piece c piece would c channel would be better but yeah something like that and then this is the worst of it here where this has to be um, put in some kind of a anvil or something like that or some kind of piece in here to give it to support so we could actually hammer that back out again because that's even kind of bulged there but i mean it's not it's not thick material i mean this material right here is really thin I mean it's only an eighth of an inch mild steel so I mean you don't even need to heat it up really you could cold hammer it back in place and the other parts I got my new hubs came in and they have the races pre-pressed pre, uh, in so I don't have to end up doing that it's already got the races and as you can see it's got studs for the bolts and they included the lug nuts obviously for it so there's my old cracked piece that basically that's just uh, scrap metal now. I'll put it in the scrap metal box. But I also have this as a backup. So should something happen to one of these hubs, I can use this as a backup. And I can even, if I wanted to, if one of these hubs failed, I could probably remove these pieces. They're probably press-in pieces. So I could even get them out, put them in here, and just make this the same way. But, or even just use it the way it is. I mean, it would just be, from the outside, you couldn't tell much of any way anyway. You don't see more than one side of the trailer, but... Now, because of this, this came with dust caps and bearings. Well, remember, I was working on that before. So now I got dust caps, dust caps, dust caps, enough dust caps for two and a half trailers and enough bearings for two changes of bearings and another 
half change of bearings so I could change them completely one time in these two hubs and then change one side if one side went bad so I think I've got more than enough parts to uh, do the job plus extras for maintenance in the future so anyway my friend Mike R asked me a question too and it's a very important question he says aren't you going to probably put more money into this trailer than if you had just went to Harbor Freight and bought a trailer absolutely true I could get one of those $350 Harbor Freight trailers probably either on sale with a coupon for maybe 290 bucks if I waited for a sale and I'm certainly going to have more than that into this trailer here well three main reasons I want to talk about and the third one is the most important first off I really like working on these kind of projects it's something fun to do and now that I'm retired it's uh, it's something that's not super difficult to do and especially since I have the help of the Buckeye boys which those guys are trailer experts so they can do those parts I need but even if I didn't have them available I could I could take it to a shop or I could get out of my lazy streak and I've got a welder up overhead that I haven't finished putting together so I could even do that myself if I wanted to but I just uh, plus I have to actually it's a wire feed welder so I've got to learn to use that too I'm a stick welder so it's just it's simpler if somebody else has the stuff available to do that so yeah number one I like doing this kind of project so it's been kind of fun to do um, number two um, also the fact that it's going to be built the way I want it to be built too. I'm going to make modifications to it to where it's going to be better than anything from Harbor Freight and it's going to be better than even this one was when it was brand new. I mean it's a made in USA new way trailer so there are some things about it for example the axle piece I think is a lot better built than the new Harbor Freight trailers. Now not to put down the Harbor Freight trailers I think their axles for only carrying a thousand pounds or so they're more than adequate but they're not a solid round axle from side to side. They take a C-channel piece and then weld axle parts to either end of it, which is fine for, for a utility trailer that folds up 4x8. That's absolutely fine, but the axle that I have on this new way, the way it's made, it is actually a one-ton axle, and it will carry that much. Now, you'd have to do some more modifications, obviously, probably uh, least of which is getting a better leaf spring system, too. I'd probably need a three three set of leaf springs instead of two if I was going to carry something like that. And the other thing is, my vehicle and the way the trailer is built without brakes, it's just not a safe thing to do. I think a thousand pounds is asking a lot. More, more likely to me, it would be this trailer would be really safe with 500 to 600 pounds, which would be the weight of one large motorcycle. And that's, that's all I desire to carry. And 90% of the time, all this trailer is going to do, it's going to carry probably sheets of plywood and sheets of uh, drywall from the closest Home Depot or Menards or something like that. But number three reason is, this trailer is one of the last things my dad gave me. We actually uh, made a deal where uh, he was going to upgrade his trailer anyway, and he was—he told me he was looking for a router table. And up overhead in some, I don't know, garage sale, estate sale, something, I had this really nice router table. I forget if it was DeWalt or... It was a brand name router table, a really good one, and I didn't have a router to go with it, as a matter of fact. And I said, Dad, those uh, router tables go for like 150 200 bucks for a really good one, don't they? He's like, yeah. I said, well... Your trailer was uh, $159, brand new. I think you got it on sale for $149. This was 1989 at Builder Square. I think you waited for a sale. So it's about a $150 trailer. So I said, why don't I just, um, since you're going to upgrade your trailer anyway, why don't I just trade you my router table for this trailer? So, yeah, this trailer used to belong to my dad, and it was one of the last things I got from him. So I didn't really mind. I mean, I was willing to put up to about twice the value of a Harbor Freight trailer to get this trailer up and running. Now, I'm not gonna. it's not going to be near that. I'm going to probably invest more like I don't know 150 bucks tops in the trailer um, plus all the time and labor and stuff like that it, it might end up being a little bit more but that's just my guess right now about 150 bucks plus plus the time and the labor and the effort and but the other thing about it too is the trailer everything on this trailer every single piece is going to be checked out personally by me with my eyeballs is going to be approved by me and it's going to be at least as good a quality as when the trailer was brand new and in a lot of cases it's going to be better quality when the trailer was brand new so that's my basically reason and that uh, thank you Mike for asking that question because yeah I didn't even think about that that should have been answered in the very first one but I didn't think about it myself so that's the latest update uh, not sure when the next uh, update part three will be but it will happen when it happens maybe at the clubhouse by that time or maybe something I do here who knows so talk to you guys later